Hey guys, so in this video we're going to talk about conservation of energy in rolling motion problems. Now, rolling motion, if you remember, is a special kind of rotation problem where we have an object that not only spins around itself, but it also moves sideways. So similar to if you have a toilet paper on a wall, it's rolling on a fixed axis, right? That's not rolling motion. Rolling motion is if you get the toilet paper and you throw it on the floor and it's going to roll and on, um, it's going to rotate and move on the floor. So it rolls on the floor. So let's check out how that stuff works. All right, so remember, if an object moves while rotating, this is called rolling motion, um, and it does this on a surface without slipping, we can say, let me draw that real quick, usually show it like this, VCM, and there is an omega at the same time. Um, we say that the velocity in the middle here equals to R omega, where R is the radius of that um, wheel shape, wheel-like object, okay? So this is an extra equation that we get to use. All right, now remember um, that in order for an object to start rotating, um, so for it to start rotating, in other words, to go from omega zero to an omega of not zero, or to rotate even faster, in both of these cases we have alpha, we have an acceleration, there needs to be static friction, okay? You have to have static friction in order to roll, friction static, okay? Now, the role of static friction in rolling motion, what it's doing, it's essentially converting some of your velocity into omega. So think about it this way. If you have this guy and there's no friction, it's going to move on a surface. It's going to move on a surface like this. Notice that I'm not rolling it. What friction does is it gets some of this V here and starts to turn it into rotation, right? If this was completely frictionless ice and you threw a disc, it wouldn't roll. It would just go like this. But friction is what causes it to roll at the same time. So it's taking some V and changing into omega. Now, technically what it's doing, um, it's getting some linear kinetic energy and converting it into rotational kinetic energy, okay? Now, that being said, friction static does that without dissipating any energy because you're converting from kinetic to kinetic, so it stays within mechanical energy. So we're gonna say that even though there is static friction, the work done by static friction is zero okay the work done by static friction is zero all right so very briefly here to summarize if you have no acceleration if you have a no acceleration um i'm sorry if you do have an acceleration if acceleration is not zero there has to be a static friction um, but the work done by static friction is zero okay the phrase that i want to you to remember here is that you need Fs in order to have alpha, okay? Need Fs in order to have alpha in these kinds of problems. Now, the word without, the, the term without slipping means that there's going to be no kinetic friction. And a vast majority of rotation problems are going to be, um, you're gonna have some acceleration, but it is going to roll without slipping. So what that means is that you have static friction, but you have no kinetic friction. Um, and, but even though you have static friction, it doesn't do any work. So when you write the work equation or when you write the conservation of energy equation, the work done by static friction is zero. Cool, let's get started. Let's do an example here. So we have a solid cylinder. Solid cylinder is the shape. It tells me that I'm supposed to use I equals half mR squared. The mass is m, the radius is r. So this is a literal solution. We're gonna solve this with letters. We're gonna derive an equation here um, instead of actually getting numbers. It is released from rest. Okay, so the mass is m, the radius is r. It's released from rest, so v initial equals zero. From the top of an inclined plane of length l, blah, 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 let's draw this here. So you got a solid cylinder all the way at the top here. Um, this plane has a length of l and it makes an angle of theta with the horizontal. The cylinder rolls without slipping. Rolls without slipping means that there's no kinetic friction. No kinetic friction. It does, it's, there's no rubbing of the cylinder on the surface. It just rolls. 
and I want to derive an expression for the linear and angular speed at the bottom of the plane. So when it's here, I want to know what is V final and what is omega final. And we're going to use conservation of energy. This is very similar to when we solved, when we use conservation of energy to find the final velocity of a block at the bottom. The big difference now, it's obviously not a block, it's rotating, so we have rotational energy as well, okay? So it's similar to this. All right, so kinetic initial plus potential initial plus work non-conservative equals kinetic final plus potential final. All right, there's no kinetic energy at the beginning because it's not moving initially, it starts from rest. Um, I do have a potential energy because I have a height, so I'm gonna write mgh initial plus work non-conservative. Two works, you, you're not doing anything, you're just watching, uh, and then there's the work done by friction. And I wanna be very explicit here that even though there is static friction, even though there is static friction, um, the work done by static friction is zero, okay? So there is basically no work. Um, there's nothing here. There is kinetic energy at the end. Now, what type of kinetic energy do we have at the end? Well, what's special about rolling motion, one of the things that's special about rolling motion is that the object is rolling around itself and moving at the same time, right? So it's sort of doing this. Um, so I have the one object has two types of motion, so it has two types of kinetic energy. So I'm going to write half mv squared, it's final, plus half i omega squared, final. There's no potential energy at the end because you are on the ground, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to expand i and we're going to rewrite omega. The reason we're going to rewrite omega is because we have v and omega. And remember, whenever we have v and omega, what we always want to do is instead of having two variables, v and omega, we want to rewrite omega so we have v and v, which is the same variable. So we're going to change omega into v. And we're able to do this because in rolling motion, we have this extra equation right here. Okay, so I can use that equation to replace it. So V equals R omega, therefore omega is V over R. So here instead of omega, I'm going to write V over R. Okay, and then I'm going to plug in I here. I is half MR squared. Okay, and I'm just going to go ahead, I know I'm writing backwards here, sorry about that. I'm going to go ahead and write this whole thing out. Okay, so if you get here, this is the most important part, as long as you can get here, the rest is just a lot of cutting. We're going to cancel out a bunch of stuff. So notice that the R squared cancels with this R. This happens uh, all the, uh, almost all the time, right, that the R's cancel in the conservation of energy equation, so look out for that. Notice that I have M, M, M. Every one of these three terms is an M. They all refer to the same object because I only have one object, so I can cancel the masses as well. And then I'm left, with, um, I'm left with some fractions here. I'm going to multiply this whole thing by 4 because I really don't like fractions. So um, I'm multiplying, so this becomes 4GH initial. Uh, 4 times half becomes 2V final. And 4 times a quarter is just 1. So this becomes V final squared. Okay. And obviously these two combine to be 3V final squared. And I am almost ready to plug it in. Um, v final will be 4 ghi. This 3 is going to go down there. And then I take the square root of it. There's one more thing I have to do, um, which is notice that I'm not given h, right? The problem doesn't give us h. The problem gives us l and theta. But I hope you remember that h equals l sine of theta. Okay? Can you see that? Yes, you can. So I'm going to rewrite this as 4G L sine of theta divided by 3. Okay? Now, so this is the final answer. I just want to make one quick point here. I want to notice how, I want to actually show you this guy here. Notice what this looks like. This looks very similar. This looks very similar to what this final velocity here for a block would look like. You might remember that the final velocity after an object drops a height of h, um, irrespective of whether it's straight down or at an angle, is v final is the square root of 2gh 
And I want to show, I want to point out that this is very similar, but instead of 2 GH, I have 4 over 3 GH, right? And that's because the form, the form of the solution um, in rotation problems is similar or the same, the form is similar or the same to linear to the equivalent linear motion problem, okay? Um, what I mean by that is that you should expect that this final answer here will look like this. The difference is, but it has a different coefficient. It has a different coefficient, okay? In fact, the coefficient in rotation, in rotation, the coefficient is lower than it would be in linear. When you get out of here, it's lower than it would be in linear. What does that mean? Well, 2, um, this is 4 over 3, which is 1.33. And this number has to be lower than a 2. The reason why I'm making this point is so that you can feel a little bit more comfortable. If you remember that this is how it works, which you probably should, um, when you're solving a question like this, you can look at it and say, hey, this looks kind of like what it would look like in linear motion. I'm probably right. The other way this is helpful is you can check to make sure whatever coefficient you got is less than what you would have gotten um, what you would have gotten in linear motion. So if it's less than two in this particular case, then you're good to go. If you've got something that's like a 2.5, let's say you've got five over two GH, 5 over 2 is 2.5, that's more than 2. So now you know that you've done something wrong. The reason why it's lower, the coefficient slower, is because you are moving slower, right? It's a lower coefficient because you're moving at a slower pace. And that's because if you're rolling while, um, if you're rolling while coming down the hill, you have two types of energies. Therefore, you move overall in a slower, you have a lower V going down, okay? So that's it. That's how these problems work. I um, hope this makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions.